Hello, good morning. I'm hoping you can see me, hear me. Uh, we have a slightly different setup this morning. So please do pop on and say hello. I'm um, going to see if I can get the comments up. Good morning, good morning. Sorry I'm a little bit late. Uh, technical difficulties is uh, what I'm blaming this morning. I hope you're well. I'm finished my work for the week, which is good. Good morning, Lisa. Nice to see you. Right. Good morning, Claire. Good morning, Adriana. Nice to see you too. You don't get to see my probably not so beautiful face this morning um, because I've got a new camera so I'm playing around with the setup and um, trying to figure out yeah this is my new camera I can get it to see my face but one thing at a time shall we do one thing at a time how can you can you hear me okay that's my second question I think you can see me Haha, uh -huh, after watching on silent, technically supposed to be homeschooling, Amir. Lovely to see you. Good morning, Anita. Um, the, the comments are not scrolling down, so I will do my best. Um, but yet, yeah, this is a new setup, so please do bear with me if I don't answer all of your questions. So, what are we doing today? No line, water colouring. Anne Marie, I'm, actually, I might be able to get it up on my computer so that I can see the comments. Um, Anne-Marie requested that we have a look, have a little look at some new line water colouring. Oh, you can hear me good, perfect. Thank you, Antriana. Good morning, Liz. Nice to see you. You can hear me fine. That is fab news. Um, let's click on my own video on here. So I've got it connected to the laptop. I've got the computer up. So it's all going a bit, but it's not very bright, is it? So I'll have a look at the settings. I can change those in the camera. We'll go with what it is for today Let's see if I can get a bit more light down there morning Lizzie nice to see you so yeah we're going to have a look at some no line water colouring you may have seen on my blog this is my website here um, you may have seen on my blog that um, I'm doing a technique series of, of water colouring and uh, one of the cards that I made was this and then Anne Marie said oh can we have a go at no line water colouring so I said sure let's give that a go and this is the Forever Fern stamp set um, and the Love You Always stamp set. So let me show you those quickly. This is the Love You Always. A lot of people... Um, what, Jill, good morning. Hooray. It's been a long time, but I'm super duper pleased we managed to get you on. And I can see your comments. So lovely to have you watching with us. I hope you're keeping well. Um, nice to have a text from you yesterday as well. A little bit of a chat with you. So this is the Love You Always stamp set. And uh, a lot of people might look at this and say this is for Valentine's. But we're going to be using the flowers. And there's this cards in my series of posts um, are all including the flowers from this set. And just looking at different ways that we can use that. So I won't show you the card that's upcoming. But I will show you the ones that I have already done. And this is the Forever Fern. Really, really nice leaves for the background. Super pleased you've managed to get in with us, Jill. So that's one we're going to make today. Um, I've got one more coming up on my post. I've got two more coming up on my post. So these are the two that I've shared so far. Uh, making a, a like a splodgy watercolor background, and then making um, a stripy watercolor background. So those are the two that I've done so far. And then we're going to have a go at no line water colouring, um, which is an interesting technique. I am not going to profess and say that I am the best at this, but it's it's fun. It's a good technique to have a go at. So you need to start yourself with a piece of watercolour card stock. Um, this is going to make our background, this one, um, but I'm not going to go straight onto the background to begin with. Yeah, the splodge is brilliant, isn't it, Liz? I, I love doing those. I do like doing this. You can just get a bit messy with it all. 
And I've managed to lose the piece of watercolour cardstock. I mean, how do you lose? How, seriously, how do you lose things so quickly? Um, let me just see if I've... I literally had everything set out and ready to go. Let me just grab another piece. So I've got a piece of watercolour cardstock. And I've got um, some Daffodil Delight ink. And the flowers. So we need a big flower. You can see I've used quite a lot of stays on on these. I have cleaned it, but obviously not very well. And the small flower. And what I'm going to do is I'm uh, going to stamp it really, really lightly. You want as light a stamp as you can get away with. Okay. So I stamped off, stamped off again, and then stamped on the page. When you're first, st you lose them when they're in view, I know Liz, they are in view, they're just not on the camera view, it's incredible how we lose things, I don't even know if you can see that, I'm going to test my new camera out, look, um, you want it as light as you can physically get it, with still being able to see the lines. Because you need to be able to see the lines in order to be able to watercolour, but what you don't want is to be able to see the lines after you've watercoloured. Uh, so, oh, you can see that. I can see that you can see that. Um, so you could probably even go one lighter if you wanted to, but I'm going to stick with that for today. Take your water painter. The Stampin' Up! water painters are brilliant. A crafter's desk is a treasure trove of lost items. Amory, that is absolutely the best way of describing it. It really is. Everything is lost, unless it's in your hand, is what I've found. Oh, the gifts I've found. There they go. I found that piece now, over the other side of the table. So these are the water painters, £11.25, and you get three in a pack. Um, they're really, really good because you get three different sizes. So you get this really, really wide brush one that you can use for the background that I showed you the other day on that stripey watercolour card. Then you get a normal, what I would call a normal size one, just a normal brush. These are great for working with kids as well if you have got kids because you don't need the pots of water because it's, it's a barrel and it contains water and you just fill it up, you unscrew it, fill it up with water and then you can get away to um, Creating. I'm going to use this really, really small one though. You get a fine tip one, and that's what I'm going to use today. So, for your ink, you've got a couple of options. We're watercoloring with Stampin' Up's new, um, or Stampin' Up ink. This is one of the old pads, and these were really, really good because they were really flexible in the middle, so you could squidge them, and you get this beautiful pool of um, ink here. And that's what I'm going to use for this one. And then when it comes to the other one, I'll show you a different technique. So the first thing to try and decide is where are the where are the darker bits going to be? And where are the lighter bits going to be? That's the first thing that you need to try and work out. Let's try and put that in the light just over here. And I'm going to start with the darker bits. And you really don't want a lot of water. You're just going to want a little bit of water. And this petal here is underneath. The others now with the no line watercoloring because stamping up ink is um, I've got a bit dark all over there but because stamping up ink is water based what you'll find is that you'll dissolve the ink that's on the page so that's generally why we don't use the stamping up classic ink pads when we're using water because they run and they and, and they dissolve and you won't see the lines and they, they can literally run the ink runs um, but that's actually what we're looking for when we do this technique to kind of go over those lines and, and dissolve them into nothing because we don't want to see them hence the no line watercoloring so I'm coming all the way out almost to over the line 
so that I'm dissolving that line and you can go in and put a bit darker. Now can you see I've, I've skipped a petal and I've done that because I don't want that petal to run into this one so I need to let the watercolour dry. Watercolour when it's um, wet it's still malleable you can play with it. When it dries it kind of holds fast much better. Not entirely you can still go in and, and add to it and play with it but it does hold fast a little bit better. So this petal is quite light here so I'm going to go for this one which is the darker one just to stick with what's in my head of working with the slightly darker ink because it, it's behind all of this. So that's that's what we're going to do. How is everybody doing? How are you all keeping? All right. I've um, found myself getting a little frustrated at work this week one might say. <laughs> I think it's just everything. I was speaking to people and, and I think everybody's getting a little bit tired, a little bit frustrated. So sometimes it's nice just to sit down in the quiet and um, just do a little bit of mindful colouring like this. Good for the soul. Good morning, Mo. How are you doing, my lovely? It's a bit dark. I, my apologies if you are feeling it's a little bit dark here. Or it might just be my computer screen. I can't tell. Oh, you're doing good, Jill. Perfect. It's hard, isn't it? I'm finding life hard at the moment. Hold fast is a naval term, Liz. It is. Yeah, absolutely. Hold fast. It's when you're working with the ropes and the lines and stuff. So again, just a little bit dark in here. A bit more ink. Daffodil Delight's a funny colour. It can be really dark, I found. Or come out if you add a lot of water to it to so the really lightest of tones so it's a great color to work with and then that needs to be a bit light so when with the watercolor painters just grab a piece of kitchen towel press and squeeze this barrel and then you'll get a little bit of water out and um, you can clean your brush like that really frustrated at work and not sleeping well at the moment but looking forward to the weekend ah Oh, COVID negative, good Liz, just a snotty, oh bless you, just a snotty cold. It's that time of year, it really is, isn't it? Yes, Amory, I am looking forward to the weekend too. Um, it's funny, isn't it, how um, we're just getting a little bit frost. Hold fast. Good morning, Linda, nice to see you this morning. I've got your thing to put in the post. And to everybody who signed up for the class last week, the papers arrived midweek this week. So they are in my, I've done them, I've prepared all the packs this week. A bit manic actually trying to get all that done as well as working um but i've prepared all your card and the papers uh, are here and they're ready to go in the post as soon as we finish here today i will be heading up to the post office and getting those into the post so thank you for your patience it's been a bit of a wait but yes they did arrive they were all safe and sound so they'll be coming out to you shortly posh kitchen towel is it? <laughs> it's just my regular, I don't know. We're very, do you know, we are very, very frugal with our kitchen towel. Russ hates me using it. So when I use it, Liz, if I'm just using it for something, I have to tear off a bit of it. I'm not allowed to, hop I, I make him sound like a, a, a giant. He's not, he's not an ogre or anything like that. He's lovely. But yeah, we're just a bit frugal. So I have to tear off pieces of kitchen towel. Uh, so it lasts forever and I have no idea when I last bought that, that roll. Uh, so I'm just going around. This one's going to be quite light, this petal here, because it's over the other two. So I'm just going to water that down ever so slightly. And then paint that one. And we can add some definition in in a bit. We're just kind of creating the base of the leaves at the, of the petals at the moment. I'm leaving that middle bit blank for now. Uh, no problem. Have you signed up? Have you signed up to what, my lovely? Um, the next class is the March class, which is the Fancy Fold class. If anyone wants to sign up for that one, that's on, bookings are open at the moment. I'm going to have to close them soon. I haven't. I just haven't stopped to think. Um, but I'm going to have to close bookings fairly soon so that I can start preparing the car packs and send them out to you. Oh, you're very welcome, Anita. Yours will be coming out to you this afternoon. I'm going to drive over and do the deliveries this afternoon as well. Um, so that will be coming your way imminently. 
and then this a little bit lighter I should really wait to, for that to dry I've broken my own rule but there we go so that's one of our little flowers you're gonna send you me, send me some when I'm in my new house oh Liz bless you soon my soon we're moving early next month was hoping it was going to be this month but um haven't quite got there so this one I'm just jabbing I'm kind of dabbing with the paint brush can you see not really painting as such just up and down I oh, do you know what at least I would use kitchen roll for everything as well I'm terrible I used to use so much of it until I came here and I kind of restricted a little bit let's say yes just tap water Jill yep absolutely just tap water so this is the mango melody it's one of the new stamping up pads and they don't squeeze quite as well so what I'm going to do is just grab a little bit of ink onto my I really don't I mean I that will do loads of it really didn't even need that much could have done just a tiny corner because it's quite a dark ink so I just need this really really small bit and I'm just going to go into the center there and I'm going to water that down it's a bit too blotchy for my liking and I'm just that's going to create the center of our flower and what you can do then is just pick up and again less water the, the, if you've got more water your lines will be looser I oh, thought my kitchen towel was navy too all those stripes <laughs> um, if you've got a lot of water your lines will be looser if you've got less water your lines will be and this is what I'm talking about we're going to do a bit of flicking can you see on the actual stamp I don't know if you can actually, that stamp's in terrible condition. Um, let me grab the actual, if I can find it. Here it is. Stamp case. Can you see here, you've got all these lines on this stamp. So that's what we're going to try and recreate. Okay. How's the picture today, everybody? Is it is it better than normal? Is it the same as normal? Or is it worse than normal? I think it's better. I would say that because I've just I bought this new camera. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is just do a bit of flicking from the centre to create these lines. And you can do this in Mango Melody or Daffodil Delight, depending on what you, what you want. How brave you are, maybe. And... Um, what kind of effect you want and again how much water you use I'm just going to loosen those lines up a little bit will dictate how harsh those lines are this is this takes for this is not a technique for the faint-hearted if you want to do it really really nicely because it takes quite a while We've only done one little flower, but it's fun. I love it. So if you want to sit down for a little bit of afternoon colouring. Oh, it's fabulous, is it, Liz? Good. I just need to check the um, ISO settings, I think, and maybe let a little bit more light in. Because it's quite light here, but it appears quite dark on the camera. Yeah, the problem with light over the top, then, is we'll get a shadow from the... Um, camera so I've got the light to the side which again isn't great I need the light here really I need it like that but then I would have to hold it like that so I do I do need to play with lighting a little bit um, I wonder actually I wonder but yes I'll have a play um, probably not not so much today but I think I can change the settings on the camera to let more light in which is cool the camera is clearer, good. I mean, it's because it, I've got it hardwired as well, so I'm not just going through a remote connection. I've got this connected to my laptop. Um, I had a chat with Russ about it, and it's not internet speed for us, it's upload speed. Apparently most people don't upload, but he does quite a lot of uploading for work, as do I. Um... When I'm doing these videos, we're uploading, not downloading. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna call that done. I'm happy with that. I think just maybe a little bit more, a little bit more around here on this petal. 
Yeah, I've got a ring light, Lise. That's what I was going to just say. I've got one here, ready to go. Let's see if I can attach it. All the gear and no idea, as, <laughs> as they say. Gosh, there's just so much to learn, you know. Just, I mean, when I a year ago, I I wouldn't have had a clue how to do any of this, but needs must. And I wanted to share my crafty things with you all. Is that better? Let me know if that's better. Turn that one off. A head torch. <laughs> Good morning, Sandy. How are you doing? Uh, let's see if we can turn that up a little bit. A head torch. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? I've literally just got wires everywhere. Let's try that. Right. So that's our flower. I'm going to leave that. I'm done. I'm done there. Then grab the other flower. Oh, is it the same? <laughs> well, that's no good. I've put, um, I've put one of these ring lights on that I bought. Right, so stamp off. Stamp off again. Oh, thanks, Anne-Marie. Honestly, it's been... So have you guys as well, because... Some of you guys have learned, like Jill, you know, the amount of effort Jill's put in to try and learn how to get onto Facebook, you keep getting locked out, you keep having a oh, nightmare with it, but you keep persevering, so it's not just me that's adapted, we have together, I think. I can't believe that's the same, I've got this massive light coming in now, but yeah, I think it's the, I can play with the camera settings. So, oh, thank you, Liz, I know, it's just, it's insane, really, the amount that... Oh, yeah, mind-blowing. If you actually stop to think about it, and sometimes we don't celebrate the small achievements. That's what they said at Stampin' Up! recently, wasn't it? Celebrate the small things. So I've got this flower now. I've stamped it really, really lightly, and again, we're just going to go in with the darker section here. I'm keeping an eye on the time, because I want to get to the post office to post all your goodies. So I'm going to try and probably do this one a little bit quicker. And this one's going to be one of the darker ones. This petal's in behind the others, so especially around here. And then lighter on the top. If you want it a bit lighter and you've gone in and it's still wet, just dab your kitchen towel on. You'll take some of the ink away. And that will give it a slightly lighter effect, because actually this one, this petal, comes underneath. So we need to go in darker in this one. And the with the no line watercolouring what you're trying to do is recreate those lines with shading so where there would have been a line you need to then kind of recreate that line but not just with a drawn line with shading does that make any sense at all it's really hard to explain things sometimes so i think this petal is underneath and that's that's why we need to work out which petals are underneath and which petals are over the top and then we're going to come into lighter out the end here. And again, I probably shouldn't have done petal next to petal, but never mind. This one here, I think, is over the top, so that's going to be light. Got to go. Enjoy Cupper and a Card. Say hey to everybody for me. I so wish sometimes I could do Cupper and Card. It would be. I'm, I'm doing a Mears at the moment because it's twelve o'clock, but I didn't make it last week because I was too busy. <laughs> I've just, uh, sometimes I wish I could just switch off, but it's just too much to do. Right, so that goes over the top, like that one, so again it's a bit lighter. And then this one is... Oh, it makes sense, totally makes sense. Thank you, Lisa. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I wonder. And then a little bit lighter out here. And I've gone really light with the lines so that I can barely see it. <clears throat> if you can't see the lines and you're worried, grab your stamp, flip it over, and then you have something to copy. Yeah, so you can see a little bit better where those lines would have gone. 
that petal comes all the way to there. And then where am I going to go? Let's go this one. So this is un over here. So it's going to be lighter on that edge. <clears throat> and then I think it comes under this one. So I want this really dark. In that kind of area there. And then it can come out to blend in with that lighter one. And we can go in with a bit more. You could go in with a bit of Mango Melody as well, if you wanted to. This one then is over the top, I think. But this one's got a folded over petal. So I'm going to grab a little bit of ink and just come in darker underneath here and then fade that out. And then I'll go back in in a second and do that really, really light bit. Thank you, Anita. I hope you can see it okay. One of the things I love about these Stampin' Up! water painters, ab above some of the others that I've used, is that they don't release a lot of water. So they're perfect for something like this, um, where you really don't want to flood the area. You just really want that control, and you get that with these because they've released the tiniest amount of water. It can be a little bit of a... when you want lots of water out to clean them, it can be a little bit of a pain. Um, but actually, when you're doing something like this, you just want the tiniest amount of water to come out. This is perfect. They really come into their own here. So again, just coming in. And the beauty with watercolours is you can just build up that colour. So you can just keep going in with little bits and little bits. I'm going to come back to this one now, just while I wait for that to dry slightly. And then that's that bit there. So again, can you see the two different effects? This one's slightly different because we've put some flicking, flicking lines on. It sounds like I'm swearing. Um, flicking lines in. But this one here, I've left blank. I am going to add the lines because that's the effect that I'm going for. But if you didn't want to, you can absolutely leave it like this one. And go for that really, really soft, natural look. I just wanted them to be more of a focal point standing out on the background, which you'll see in a minute. And again, under here, where you've got this... Um, ...turned over petal. Just going for a little bit of shading in there. So that's the bulk of that done. And then I'm going to go in with some lines. Maybe a little bit of Mango Melody as well. You can mix your colours as well, don't forget. Quite dark that one. To create somewhere in between the two, literally exactly like watercolouring. It is a happy colour, isn't it? Yellow. And yellow and blue just goes so well. Don't forget a couple of little lines at the top if you want to bring those in. It's like crease marks in the petals. I 
So I should be writing a blog post about this card as well, I think, and uploading the video. Bit of a two in one bonus. A couple of lines in from the top. It's kind of like when you when you've chosen a style for your flower, you have to you have to finish it off. You can't just kind of go, oh, I'll just do that on a few of the petals. You can see how brilliant this small brush is for these flicking lines. It's the this stamp well, I'm gonna lie to you, okay. It's the stamping up watercolour card. It's not, I've run out completely. This is the stamping up watercolour card. Um and actually it's quite a heavyweight card stock, the stamping up one. Um, but this is a this is a really light flimsy one, so it's fine. It's absolutely fine for doing it. But um, yeah, I would normally use the Stampin' Up one just because it's that little bit thicker. I do think it takes the water. This is rucking ever so slightly, and we're really not putting a lot of water on here. The Stampin' Up one is slightly thicker, but yeah, I've run out. Needs must and all that. <laughs> it is amazing, Anita. How many techniques there are for watercolouring? Incredible for stamps as well. Yeah, oh, oh, it's amazing how many techniques there are for stamps and to watercolour is so artistic. Yes, this is a lovely one because if you aren't an artist but you want to have a go, this is fabulous um, because you haven't got to draw anything, you're, just, you're using the lines that are already there and it's kind of stress-free whereas kind of watercolouring and art, art it can be quite stressful if you can't get it right if you're not so that's that i'm going to leave it at that because so we could literally be here forever so i'm just going to do the middle bit just like i did before kind of dabbing that color on yeah this is a fun technique and you can do this without watercolor as well you can do no line blending you can do no line um colouring with actual just pencils it's just about stamping that really really light image can I get a little bit of water it's about stamping that really really light image and then colouring it in So you can go on as much or as little as you want to. Let me just clean that brush through and then we'll fussy cut out those and I'll show you why I've gone for the flowers first. We'll get, a, get started on our background. I'm not going to promise that we'll finish because all we've done here is two little flowers and we've taken 35 minutes. But yeah, so it's not a, it's not a, I'm going to make you a really quick card. It's a technique to use if you want a little bit of mindfulness. Or if you want to show somebody that you really, really care and you really thought about them, this would be a great card to send. So just fussy cutting these out. Oh, is it your favourite colour? Blue and yellow, Sandy. Oh, well, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this card. Yep, I'm going to make this one for you. All those cards I wrote the other day as well, they're going in the post today. They're really in envelopes. And I've put, every day I've done a little bit more. So one day I wrote them. The next day I put them through the... Um, I put them in envelopes and wrote the envelopes and the addresses. The next day I put them through the thing, um, the little postal machine, and figured out what size stamps they needed. The next day I put the stamps on, and today they're ready to go in the post. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a slow going process, but they are ready to send out now. 
which is good. Oh, Sandy, you're very welcome. Yeah, it's the effect of light stamping that works. Oh, you've never have you never tried this, Anita? Oh, give it a go. Share with us how you get on. It's a fabulous technique. No line watercolouring. Yep, yeah, it's the really, really light. You can also use if you're um if you don't have the inks colours that you want to work with, pick um like a really neutral colour, like a I wanna say grey, but Sahara sand is a really, really light, pale sandy colour for want of a better word and that works really well because that kind of everything's got hints of brown in it if that makes sense so it will dissolve these scissors Jill are better than others 100% stamping up ones yeah ask the guys on here what they think of my, what my scissors I love how this is in focus when I'm cutting it and the rest of the background is blurry right so those are our um, flowers and I made one earlier as well if I haven't lost it uh -huh. so those are our three flowers and we're going to use those in a bit when we decide where to place everything so here's our sheet of watercolour cardstock and this is 14 centimetres by no 13.5 centimetres by 9.5 centimetres and I've got the stamp which is from the Forever Fern stamp set this one this is like a distinctive stamp this one is a little bit harder to watercolour I found but still really nice to do so I'm going to stamp off stamp off again and then go for this third so stamp off stamp off again and then decide where you want everything to be so you kind of place your flowers and you think okay so where do I want my leaves so if that's where I want my flowers oh either a grey ink pad or embossed with a heat gun yeah love love um embossing that's the other one i've got embossed with this so i'm going to have one of my leaves coming out like this so don't stamp onto your flowers that would be disastrous if you got blue ink onto those be really careful um but move those out of the way we've already stamped this off so we know we can come down here onto the card okay and you're going to get really messy up here in this little circle but that's okay stamp off stamp off again And I'm using this one as a guide to where I want these. Stamp off, stamp off. Pop that down. Check where we want our top leaves to go then. And I want one to come out. Like so. And then you can move those out of the way. Yeah, so you're getting really messy here, but it doesn't matter because the flowers are going to cover that up. Again, misstamped here, but that's no problem because we're going to watercolour over it anyway. So we can put our flowers now out of the way. Stamp off, stamp off. And then this one's just going to fit in there like that. And now we have the task of watercolouring this. So if you really didn't want to be wasteful, what I would do is use what's on the stamp. Because there's loads of ink on there now and you can use that to watercolour with okay so just keep test test it on your scrap paper there um, and you can use the stamp again all the image that you've got here yeah they really they are beautiful scissors Anita aren't they they are gorgeous scissors so pick up some of the ink and then just go in to these darker areas and because it's distinctive as well and there's ink already on the page you'll be picking that up as you go again this small brush perfect for this 
and then just make it darker. You might, to be honest, there's not a lot of ink left on there. You might want more of a dark ink. So you can just clean off that block that we used earlier. Again, you can use what's in there, or you can just pick a little bit up there. And then you can get in there really dark. And fade that out to light there. And then leave those petals there. One of the things that you can do, you don't want to do you don't want to have to colour all of this in. So one of the things you can do is just kind of go, okay, I want my flower here, here, and here. You could even take a pencil and mark it. And you go, right, this is the area that I need to colour. Does that make sense? So you're not colouring all of it unnecessarily. I don't think we're going to finish it all today anyway. But um, this is just to give you an idea. So I'm going to go in with this one here again. This is quite dark in the base. So I want this. And then your lines. They're going to be quite dark as well, your stems. Just take your time with them. Can you see? I hope my hand's not in the way. This leaf here, it curls under, so this is, or rather it curls over, this is going to be quite dark underneath here, and then it will come down to being lighter. And then on top will be lighter too, but we'll come back and do that a little minute later when it's dried. You can be as neat or as rushed as you want. Can we hear the birds singing? Because these leaves are, are separated, that's fine. We can come in and do those straight one after the next. And we'll come back up here, we'll do this bit where it's a little bit lighter in between those two darker sections. And that's where you get the tonal difference, I guess. This leaf here is between or behind two darker ones. That's the hardest thing I find with no line watercolouring, is figuring out what's what, because you've stamped it so lightly. Yeah. That's where the packet comes into play. This one here again, it's darker just underneath here. It's darker just underneath here and then it comes to light in the middle. These two are lighter up here. And then we've just got the veins of the, or rather the, what do you call them, the little um, stem? It's not a stem, is it, on a leaf? That's it. That is no lime water colouring. When you just keep going.
can see it hardly uses any ink at all. Oh, thank you. It's a really fab, fab little technique. And this, these distinctive stamps are super duper good for it. So grab those Forever Fern stamps out. Have a play. And just keep working until you're, you're happy. And then to finish, I think that's, yeah, I'm not going to finish this card today, I don't think during this live um, so we'll pop that to one side and I will bring in one that I made earlier <laughs> I think and um, so finish it off all I did is a bit messy over here now isn't it all this stamping off messy on the other side as well that's a bit better um, all I did to finish off was a little piece of the ribbon it's this ruched daffodil delight ribbon so I've just wrapped some of that underneath underneath here and then I've used the dandy garden designer series paper so this is um, some of the paper that not many people I say not many people like I shouldn't say that should I this is some of the paper that um, the colors weren't to everybody's tastes because it had this kind of dark greenies and things like that but actually if you turn it over you've got the most gorgeous misty moonlight and white designs you forgot to say your frogs in the pond they have been up to no good ah oh, they've been up to no good naughty frogs you just shout at them saying it's so cold they didn't listen huh? it's freezing out there at the moment isn't it really really cold yeah you love the forever fern set Anne marie me too it's so versatile and actually I thought this these leaves on here um, oh, I'll come out of shot these leaves in here tied in quite nicely um, but they've got all sorts of different designs and then this is heat embossed just a little piece of misty moonlight card with white heat embossing and then I stuck the flowers up on dimensionals and then that was layered onto a mat of 14 by 10 of misty moonlight and then this is a Whisper White card base. So that's how I made that card. Um, I did use these three gems and I've run out. They're the in colour enamel dots. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy any more or not. I'll try not to overload myself when I think things might run out. But I've used them all so they're, and they're so gorgeous. But I wanted to show you quickly how we can transform pearls into any colour that we wanted. So I've got my Misty Moonlight blends. I know those cheeky frogs. Yeah, they're doing really well in your pond, aren't they? We've got a pond in our new house as well, and there's fish in there, so we're going to become fish owners. I'm not sure how I feel about that, if I'm completely honest. So look, I was doing some, this is embossing paste, I was doing some work trying to create a strawberry basket out of a chipboard the other day. I can't say it worked 100%. But, so I've got a dark misty moonlight and a light misty moonlight. Ah, thank you Mo. Thank you Sandy. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to go for the dark one first, is... Um, just round and round colour on the pearl. And that's that's it really. That's all I wanted to show you. How you can colour in these pearls. Do wait for that to dry. I've got a little heater down here. So I'm just going to... It is alcohol so it will dry um, fairly quickly. But because it's going on to a, a, pour, a non-porous surface. So I'm just waving that in front of my heater ever so slightly. And then use your take the picture. I wouldn't use the, this end because it might still be dry so just underneath there and then somehow get that onto the end of your take the picture. They need a lot of attention. What? Um, ponds? Yeah I know. 
I'm, not, I'm just not sure how I feel about that. But we'll see. We'll see. It's beautiful. It's got a little seat by the pond and everything. Super excited. Yes, Anita. Um, my dad used to have herons, and the ne the neighbour, the person we're buying that, so you can literally just put then put your gems on here instead of um, the see in colour dots. So you can colour them any colour you want. Um, the guy that we're buying the house off said he's netted the pond because it does get herons. And we kind of said that if... Oh, I shouldn't say this. No, I'm not going to say it. That's terrible. So yeah, it is netted because they do get herons. Let's put it that way. I know, Mo. I, I'm looking forward to having one. It's just how much work it's going to be. I really just... I don't know. So that's that, my lovelies. Um, I'll bring in the other cards that I've got. This is the one with the stripy background. Yes, it's got pumps, Sandy. Yeah. I don't know what that means. Is that bit good or bad? That's the one with the splattery background, like splodgies, and then I did some splatters over it as well. And then I've got a sneaky little peek. You can't ah, oh, you're more than welcome, Anita. You can't see too much because they haven't been they haven't been shown yet. Um, but I'll take these away and give you a little flash of my um, upcoming cards, shall I? Whoop. Those two coming up. So that's it. That's all you're going to get. You'll have to see on the blog. Ha ah, ha, you'll have to get a plastic hair and then it'll put the real ones off. That Mo, that's funny. Yeah, I will. Or I could get a plastic gnome. What do you reckon a gnome would put them off? Like a big scary gnome. Right, my lovelies, I could sit here and chat to you guys all day, but I must go to the post office. I have got things for the cars and then pop out this afternoon to deliver um, all the hand deliver all the ones that are local. So thank you so much for that. There is the March class coming up. Fancy folds, if anybody fancies that. Um, £15 for the, the pack. We'll be doing three different cards. And... Um, yeah, it's going to be good. I've got a couple of new folds that we've never done before. So, it doesn't work. Oh, putting a, getting a plastic, I'll get a pink flamingo. <laughs> uh, Anne-Marie, you're more than welcome. I hope that helped. If anybody's got any questions, please do get in touch. Do give me a shout. And uh, yes, Mo, everybody have a lovely, lovely day. The sun is just coming out here. I can see it. So um, make the most of it. Enjoy, relax, have a lovely weekend. And uh, I will be back with you all next week. Look after yourselves. Stay safe. Stay well. And uh, stay happy. Take care. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>